Okay, so welcome back. I just wanted to show you to make sure um, that I updated um, the uh, null hypothesis to so it reads correct. So ratios of offspring observed, you can always write that, follow, follow, and then whatever um, form of inheritance that you're predicting. Okay, so we are now going to take our expected values and our observed values, and Kaiser is sitting on my paper, move cat, um, and I'm going to calculate, I'm sorry Kaiser, he's sad, um, and we're going to calculate our chi-square value. I'm going to type this because I'm getting tired with the mouse, <laughs> believe it or not. So the first one we'll do green, and let me change the font so that it's bigger and pretty, because that's what we care about, big and pretty. <laughs> okay. Okay. So for green and hairy, we're going to calculate our chi square value. So we take our observed value, which if we go back up top, our observed value is three fifty, right there. So 350, and we subtract our expected value from our Punnett square, where we calculated 315, and we're going to take this, and we're going to square it. So you can get through this out in your calculator right now. I'm going to write a little caret for squaring, because I don't think I have subscripts here. So a little caret squaring. And then you take this answer, and divide it by the expected value, which is 315. And if you do this in your calculator, you get 3.888 repeating. Okay, we're going to do the same thing for green with no hair. Our observed value, if we scroll back up to the top, and I know this is annoying, um, is 105. And our expected value here um, is also 105. And we're going to take this now. Notice this is kind of pointless. Once you get zero, zero squared is zero. And anything zero divided by anything um, is also zero. Uh, so I'm going to square it. And then divide by the expected value. And here, this one you're going to get happily zero. OK. Um, now, for the next one, we have red and hairy. I'm just going to copy this over. I'll actually, I'll, I'll actually do it because you guys need to think. So the observed value that we have for this one is 95. Go back to the um, text. So 95. And I hate when that happens. Okay, back into the text box. Just ignore that 9 there. So 95 minus our expected value, which is 105. And remember, we're squaring this. So carrot square um, divided by, so we do that math, divided by um, our expected value, which in this case is I moved down, 105. And when you do this math, and I suggest you do it to make sure your answers are matching, you should get 0 0.952 rounded. You can just end up not rounding. It's up to you. You can do what Sean does and just keep the um, the exponent, um, and then add the um, I mean keep these sorry not the exponent keep the denominator and then add the numerators. That makes it more accurate. And the last one is red and no hair. And if you go back up to the top, scroll back up. Um, our expected value here um, is ten. Sorry, not the expected value, the observed value. Observed value. We get those vocabulary correctly. And we're, our expected value was 15. And we're going to square it. And here I have a little carrot. So this is square. Square it. Um, and then once you get that answer, we're going to divide it by the expected value, which is 35. And when you do that math, you get 17.9 on average. Okay, scroll down. Now I'm going to write again. So if you add these up, if you sum these up, 
you end up getting that our chi-square value, if you sum all those up, is around, not exactly, but sorry, rounded, 27, um, 22.732. Okay. In this case, because um, our we have four cases, our degrees of freedom is four minus one, which is three. If I can make a three, that would be nice. Okay, now, we now have to go back to our table and find out what critical value that we need to use. So if we take a look here, let's full screen this. Um, we get our pointer. Our degrees of freedom are three, and we always use 0.05, so our critical value is 7.82. So, going back to the smart board software, and scrolling down, I'm going to ex the pointer and extend our page. Okay, so our critical value, our CV as we call it, is 7.82. Now, our chi-square value is larger than the critical value. So when that is the case, when that is the case, now, you always have to th I always have to think about this, too. So in the, when that case is, say, and when the critical value, or the, we'll say it this way, when the chi-square value is larger than the critical value, you reject your null hypothesis. So if we go back to our null hypothesis, our null hypothesis was that ratios of loss being observed follows Mendel's law of independent assortment and Mendelian inheritance. Based on our chi-square, what that means um, is that our numbers are not close enough and they do not fit Mendelian inheritance. You can make no, however, you can, they do, so they do not fit Mendelian inheritance, but you can make no assumption as to what they're following. They could be linked. They could be affected by environment. You'd have to do a separate test with expected ratios that follow those um, to test those out. But when, and I'll say this again, when your chi-square value here is bigger than your critical value, you reject, reject the null. Um, if it was smaller, then you would fail to reject your null hypothesis. Um, which says that basically it looks like it's following um, the uh, it law of independent assortment. But in this case, since the critical value is smaller or the chi-square value is bigger, stick with the chi-square value being bigger, you're going to get confused. So since the chi-square value is bigger than the critical value here, we reject our null hypothesis, and that means there's something else at play here. Could be linked genes, they could be linked, um, they could have environmental uh, factors that are affecting the expression of the gene. It's not just Mendelian factors or Mendelian laws in play here. So just to review the steps so that you have, step one is to write your null hypothesis. So you can always start ratios of loss being observed, follow, and then fill in your form of inheritance. Then you do a Punnett square or predict the expected ratios if you're following this law, this method, or you think it's this form of inheritance. Um, multiply the probabilities by the total number of offspring for each case. Using that, calculate your chi-square by taking the observed value, subtracting the expecting value, squaring it, and divided by the expecting value, and doing that for all offspring, or all classes of offspring. And add them up, then add up all those values, that is your chi-square value. Find your degrees of freedom, which is the number of classes, um, the number of offspring, classes of offspring minus one. Um, and then go to the chart. Let me go to the chart again. And find your p-value based on your degrees of p-value of 0.5 and your degrees of freedom. In this case, it was three. And then your last step is to compare the chi-square value to the critical value. If your chi-square value is larger than the critical value, you reject your null hypothesis. If your chi-square value is smaller than the critical value, you fail to reject your null hypothesis, which you, which is basically means you're accepting it, but you never say that. Okay, so go on and do your own chi-squares. Now remember, it counts as a quiz grade. 
I'm going to go pet Kaiser since he's staring at me, angry, that I'm not dealing with him. Um, if you have questions or you want to check your answers, everyone should be able to get 100 on this quiz, to be honest. Um, but if you have questions, you can email me. We can um, talk or we can Skype or we can, uh, you know, meet in the chat room, meet in the today's meet thing, and I can help you out. Um, but if you have questions, please don't be afraid to ask. Enjoy your problems.